already got a hundred subs. Only took like six years. Ninety nine videos. Wow, that's a lot. Well, I guess I gotta come back to YouTube now. What should I do for my hundredth video? I guess we're doing a PlayStation 1 video. And today I plan to count down my top 10 favorite PS1 games of all time. Now before I start this list, I should point out that this is my favorite games. Not my, not what I would consider the greatest games of the PS1. Well, some of them I would. Not all the games on this list I would consider the greatest games on the PS1. And with that, let's begin. Capcom set the standard for survival horror in 1996 with Resident Evil, and in 1999, Konami would set the standard for psychological horror with the critically acclaimed Silent Hill. Silent Hill was one of the last major titles to be released for the Sony PlayStation before the arrival of the PS2 in the following year. What Silent Hill has to offer is a unique story with an amazing atmosphere. The game takes inspiration from Resident Evil 1-3 and does its own thing with it. The gameplay is pretty good, and the puzzles featured throughout the game can be pretty tricky when compared to the ones from Resident Evil. The first, Silent Hill is easily the best one in the series, whereas the sequels became mediocre over time. To me, this is a PlayStation classic. In 1987, Konami released Metal Gear for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and a few years later, a sequel, Metal Gear 2, came out as well. And for a few years, the franchise remained dormant until 1998, with Hideo Kojima coming in to direct the now critically acclaimed Metal Gear Solid. This game is something else. The gameplay is great. It is an early example of stealth gameplay in a 3D environment, and it works out pretty good. The animations throughout the game are really cool to look at, and the in-game cutscenes are what makes this game so memorable. The game is a game, but at the same time, it feels like a bit of a movie. The game features many memorable moments that are now considered iconic scenes in gaming, like the opening scene, the fight against the now iconic villain, Psycho Mantis, and Revolver Ocelot, which is the first fight in the game. David Hayter is the voice actor for Solid Snake, and he does a damn good job, and every line he delivers, no matter how stupid it may sound, comes off as badass. This is a game that deserves the praise that it gets, and I can't wait for the remake that will be coming out soon for the Sony PlayStation 5. In 1997, Namco, the company behind many of the iconic arcade games of the 1980s, dived into the platformer genre with Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle. Klonoa is a game that, while I don't have a lot of nostalgia for, it's a game that I can completely adore. This game has a 2.5D style, and I think it works pretty well for its favor. The gameplay is fun, and the soundtrack, my god, is it cool. It's a really upbeat soundtrack, just all out good vibes. And I like the story of the game. The story is pretty cool. At first, I didn't really like the game, but upon playing the game further, I realized why this game is so beloved by many. The game kept me intrigued until the very end, and the respect that this game gets is well deserved. For me, the game stands out a lot for its ending, because the ending has a twist ending. It's something that you would not expect. The game has one of the saddest endings I've ever seen for a retro video game. Even today, against some of the more recent games, it still holds out for having one of the saddest endings in video game history. This is a game that I think deserves a remake in any style. Whether that be just a remaster or a full-blown remake, I wouldn't complain. The sequels weren't as good. But to me, Klonoa is a character that deserves a lot more than he's gotten over the years. To me, this game is a PlayStation classic. Capcom defined survival horror with 1996's Resident Evil. Originally planned as a remake of Sweet Home for the Famicom, Capcom decided to change direction and create the first proper survival horror. Resident Evil is a great game. Even today, it holds up. Its gameplay, while it will take getting used to, isn't hard. The game can become really tense when you start running out of supplies due to limited inventory and ammo in around the Spencer Mansion and other areas of the game. Now, for its time, Resident Evil was the scariest game out there, but looking back, the only part to me that scared me was the first dog encounter. 
but this game is also remembered for its very incredibly bad cheesy voice acting. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. But the game is still very good, despite its voice acting. It's a game that still holds up to me against some of the later entries in the Resident Evil series, like Resident Evil 5 and 6. While this game did have a remake already, for the game came back in 2002, I feel it deserves a remake in the style of Resident Evil 2 and 3, the ones that we got back in 2019 and 2020. Because this game would be amazing. And I'm gonna be honest, I prefer Crash Team Racing over Mario Kart. Now before you get your pitchforks and torches out, just hear me out for a second, okay? I grew up playing all of the Crash Bandicoot games as a kid, and I never really played much of the Mario Kart games until a couple years ago. And to me, Crash Team Racing is just more fun. The tracks are better, there's a wide, like there's a wide variety of tracks compared to some of the Mario Kart games. I love the gameplay, it's quick and easy and it's not too challenging, and just the music in this game, I just love. Crash Cove is such a memorable track to me, and Ripper Roo has such a fun and easy boss fight. And it's not to say that I don't like Mario Kart, I just prefer Crash Team Racing. CTR, it has great tracks, every track feels unique and different from the last, and every boss fight is different and more challenging as the game gets going. I've been in this game twice now, and every time I've had a blast. It took me a couple weeks the first time to beat it, and it took me two hours the second time I tried beating the game. This game isn't hard, it's quite easy, but it can be tricky when playing with the OG PS1 controller. The gameplay of CTR is quick and fun, and I can play this game for hours and not feel that the game is getting repetitive. Nintendo had Mario, Sega had Sonic the Hedgehog, and in 1996, Sony had its first and arguably best mascot with Crash Bandicoot. Naughty Dog, the company now known for the Uncharted series and Last of Us franchise, created Sony's first true mascot for the PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot was the first really great PlayStation exclusive. It has good and simple gameplay mixed with awesome character designs and cool levels. I grew up playing the first Crash game all the time when I was younger. The franchise to me will always hold a special place in my heart, as it was the first video game franchise that I basically played. I wasn't good at the game until earlier this year. Back in the day, this was considered a challenging game. While some people still think that, I personally don't find the game that challenging anymore since I beat the game last year. To me, this game, it's tough, but not really at the same time. Once you figure out what to do, it gets easy. The controls aren't as bad as some people make it out to be, but the lack of an analog stick is what makes this game harder than it should be. The game is pretty iconic. The story is not, there's not much to the story at all, it's pretty simple. There's only like one cutscene in the entire game, but I think it's still pretty cool. To me, the music in this game is so good. The main theme is iconic, and it sets you up for such an awesome adventure. This game is awesome, and to me, the remake for the Insane Trilogy is just amazing. To me, Crash Bandicoot will always be PlayStation royalty. There's a lot of games from my childhood that will always hold a special place in my heart, but this next game I love. Bugs Bunny and Taz Time Busters is one of my all-time favorite games. I remember this being one of the first games I ever played back in the day. I used to play this game all the time with my cousins and oh, I have such fond memories of playing as Taz because I was never allowed to play as Bugs. But besides that, I love this game. The game has such a funny story, the cutscenes are so funny and make me laugh all the time. The voice acting is great, Billy West does an amazing job as Bugs Bunny, as he always does. And just, to me, this game, it's my childhood. I love this game. The gameplay is so simple and easy, it, it's pretty funny. It borrows from the previous game, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. But the gameplay reminds me of The Grinch for PS1, another game that I grew up playing when I was younger. This game, to me, has such a good story. It feels like a Looney Tune cartoon, but in a video game. The music is awesome. Like, the main menu theme I love so much, and the main theme for the hub area is just, to me, will always be in my brain. I'll always remember the music from this game. The game isn't hard, but it's not easy at the same time. Some parts of the game can be tricky, but when you're playing with two people, it's much easier. 
the game had two main things in mind. You play as Bugs or you play as Taz. Well, Bugs is the main character that most people will go towards while playing the game. You could also play as Taz if you're a second player. To me, I've never really liked playing as Taz, but if I had to, I guess I would. But Bugs is the best character in the game. He has the easiest game mechanics, and his gameplay is just so easy and simple to figure out. With Taz, it's not like it's hard, but it's not as easy as Bugs. To me, this game will always be one of my favorites. Just a classic. While I wouldn't call it a PlayStation classic, to me, I'll always think of the PlayStation 1 when I think of this game. I'll, I will always cherish those memories of me being a five-year-old kid playing this game with my cousins on the weekends. Just having a blast. I specifically remember doing a sled-in level, and there was a Tweety level of some kind. And to me, just having those special memories is what makes me so happy when I think of this game. Now we get to the top three games. Coming in at number three is a game that I absolutely love. Resident Evil 2 is the game that made me a diehard Resident Evil fan. This game is such a good game. It's a major improvement over Resident Evil 1. The gameplay is so much better, the graphics are updated slightly and look way better, and the voice acting, while still cheesy, is just leap years better than the ones from the first game. The gameplay, to me, feels more refined. It controls easier, the weapons are easier to use and move around, and to me, the running animation looks so much better compared to the running animation used for the first game with Jill and Chris. I like the story in the second game. While it's still cliche, it gets kind of crazier than the first game's story was. You have the police department, you have the underground lab, you've got the sewers and everything all connected. But what this game has going for it is its beautiful visuals. Again, this is 3D on a non-3D environment, which to me looks really good even today. This game to me was a blast to play. I remember when I played it and I had so much fun. I spent a lot of time playing the game and when I finally beat it for the first time, I was blown away. This game to me will always be one of my favorites for the PS1. The ending to me, this game has four different endings depending on which scenario you do. Well, I've beat this game three times, I've yet to get the true final ending. To me, the game isn't, I don't know, to me, it's not as hard as the first one. But that's what I like about it. This game, the inventory management is way more easier and the saving doesn't seem as challenging to me. There's more ink ribbons hidden throughout the areas of the game. And to me, the boss fights, well, the first game didn't really have many boss fights. The second one has a couple more, depending on which scenarios you've done. To me, this game will always be a classic because it introduced the franchise's two main characters or at least two more main characters, in Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. And I like with Claire Redfield, you have her, the sister of Chris Redfield from the first game. And I like the callbacks they've made to the first game in this game. To me, this game has an iconic soundtrack, with the front hall soundtrack being so memorable. And the end credits, while not as good as the first game's end credits, are still pretty good. This game had an amazing remake back in 2019 with Resident Evil 2, and the remake to me is just as good if not a little better than the original, but that's saying a lot, because this game is so good still, and holds up compared to the later Resident Evil games like Resident Evil 5 and 6, and even Revelations 2. To me this will always be a PlayStation classic. Coming in at number 2 is a game that I would say is the greatest PlayStation 1 video game ever made. I played this game back in 2019, and oh my god, this game is a masterpiece. The story is amazing, the gameplay is so addictive. I wasn't a big fan of the Metroidvania style up until I played this game. I had a blast. To me, this is the best Castlevania game, and it's definitely the greatest PlayStation game ever made. This game has an awesome story. You play as Alucard, the son of Dracula, you go and you gotta fight your dad. It's pretty cool. The voice acting, well cheesy, is so iconic. The lines of what is a man and all that. The game's very cool. 
and the soundtrack is amazing. Definitely the best for the PS1. If not all video games in general. Definitely just amazing all around. This game, the graphics, oh, just, they look so beautiful. Every area of this game is fun to explore. The gameplay to me could get a little repetitive towards the end, but honestly, it doesn't bother me. It never bothered me when I beat the game. I beat the game a couple times and I've never gotten the bad ending. This game has a pretty cool twist halfway through the game where the castle flips upside down and that's when the game to me truly begins. So now you gotta redo the castle and you go for the same castle but it's upside down. Which makes a lot of sense considering how some areas of the main castle were laid out. It's kind of like, why are they like that? But when the castle flips over, it's like, oh shit. That makes a lot of sense. This game's awesome. The gameplay's fun. And I like, you get all the good stuff at the beginning of the game only to have it taken away minutes later. And you gotta re-earn all the good weapons and items. that you would, And you finally get all those good items when you get to the upside down castle. To get the true ending of the game, you gotta have more than 196% complete. The highest I think I've had was like 197, and that took quite a while. You gotta explore every area of the game. You gotta fight all the bosses and everything like that. To me, this is a really good game, and there's no reason why this game shouldn't be considered PlayStation Classic. Like, this is without a doubt, the greatest PlayStation game ever made. This game has been re-released so many times for Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation 3 Store, it's been remastered for the PS4 and Xbox One, the Castlevania Collection, along with Rondo of Blood, the predecessor to this game. To me, this game is so good, and it's the most expensive video game I've ever bought. I bought a mint black label a couple months ago for $169, which for any other game I would not do that usually, but this game I had to. This game is in my top 5 favorite all time games, and definitely number 2 for my favorite PS1 game, but if I did a greatest PS1 games list, this would definitely be number 1. This game has everything to like, from the gameplay to the awesome story, to just it's just hard to explain, but this game is amazing. I, this game will definitely get its own full-on review someday. This game is just so good. Just everything about this game is amazing. And the soundtrack. If you haven't heard the soundtrack before, I recommend you listen to it. It's so good. And it truly is a symphony of the night. And capping off our list, number one is my personal favorite PS1 game. To me, I've always loved Spider-Man for the PS1. I used to refer to it as Spider-Man 2000 back when I was younger. This was the very first video game that I've ever played. And God, this game is what made me a true die-on Spider-Man. If the movie wasn't enough to do it for the cartoons, this was. This was the best Spider-Man game at the time. Up until this point in time, all the Spider-Man games were 2D and they did not work that well. They either had bad gameplay, bad music, and the web swinging controls were horrible. Whereas this game fits them. Spider-Man is now 3D, in a 3D environment, and you can web swing, well not for as long as you want, he can at least go from building to building, area to area, and actually shoot web at the same time. The combat system works so well, you got your standard punch, standard kick, you could do a web shield, you could shoot your web, do a web ball, you could aim and web, it's pretty cool. And the boss fights in this game aren't that hard, they're really easy, but they're fun at the same time, with the Mysterio boss fight being the best, and the final boss fight against Monster Rock being so iconic, at least for me. This game, to me, screams nostalgia for my childhood, because I love this game. But like, this is my personal favorite game. I wouldn't call it the greatest PS1 game of all time, but it's my personal favorite. This game had awesome voice acting, mixing in some of the cast from the 1994 Spider-Man animated series, and some of the cast from the 1994 Spider-Man animated series. With Rhino Romero voicing Spider-Man, 
engineer. Oh my god, he makes this game so good. Like his Spider-Man voice, I'll always remember. Hey, Spider. Hey, Black Cat. What's going on? I know there's been some trouble, but the bank's being robbed. Gotta find her. Got no choice. <laughs> where, where, where? What a wuss. Hey, wanna race? <laughs> Marker hates it when I get the drop on him. I hate it when he gets the drop on me. I can't believe they shot down those police choppers. Yeah, just my luck. I'll probably get blamed for that too. This game to me was the most comic accurate Spider-Man game ever made. It had Doc Ock, Scorpion, Rhino, Carnage, Venom, Mysterio, and Doc Ock. You had J. Jonah Jameson, you had Spider-Man obviously, you had Black Cat, you had Captain America, you had the Human Torch, you had Daredevil, you had the Punisher. Like, you had so many characters in this game to me, oh. There was the comic covers that were in between each level, and oh, this game had such a cool story, and I had a blast. I remember renting this game all the time from the local video store, and I remember always being upset when I had to return it. This game to oh, me, I'll always story, have fond memories of, like in a lot of, trying trouble. to steal my cousin's copies of the game all Venom the is time when I was younger, sense. Knowing you're always, lucky. you know, have to give it back, get pissed off. But this game to me, I could play for hours on end without getting bored and just having a blast. And the main theme of this game, I love it. It's a remix of the 1967 Spider-Man theme. It sounds so badass. Just the parts where you hear the original theme mixed in with the modernized version of it. It's just so cool and the beat of it is sick. And oh, man, the menu theme to me, I love it. It is so cool. This game, to me, was always a blast. Just everything about this game screams Spider-Man to me. The unlockables were cool, you could get special costumes, you could get character bios, you could get comic covers, you could get special modes, and you could unlock the movies for the cutscenes. The cutscenes were so fun to watch. Some of them were really cool, and some of them are just funny. To me, this game is so good. Just everything about this game is awesome. And it's not a PS1 exclusive, it's also on the Dreamcast, PC, and N64. And while the Dreamcast and PC ports are superior, because they have better graphics to me, this one is still just as good. To me, this will always be my personal favorite game. For the PS1, and just my personal favorite. And there has been talks of a remake of this and its sequel, Enter Electro, which I think would be a really cool idea. Because this game getting remade now would be so cool. And with that, the list is over. I really hope you guys liked the video. It took quite a long time to make. I now have a good editing software that I use, and I could finally make the videos I've been wanting to make for years. There's going to be a lot more individual game reviews, more top 10s, and just stuff that I feel passionate about to talk. I did have a separate video that was basically close to this, done yesterday, but I accidentally deleted it. So I had to remake everything, I had to re-record everything, I had to refilm everything had to just re-record all the things i was talking about but i failed that this video actually turned out better than the one that i did yesterday so yeah i think it'd be great if you leave a like and subscribe like i a lot of effort went into this video and i plan to make a lot more with even more effort in the future the near future because this was a blast making this video talking about things that i've always wanted to talk about in video format more just way easier than talking about things on instagram where i am limited but i had a blast talking about my favorite ps1 games just nostalgia and just childhood games that i always play just things that i've been passionate to talk about but yeah i don't know i'm finally content with where my youtube channel is i'm planning on coming back making more videos than usual not doing year breaks obviously but yeah I'm going to be serious about the channel, put some effort into it, and get some good videos out. But yeah, in the comments, if you want to say what your favorite PS1 game or even PS2 game is, that'd be pretty cool. Tell me what you liked about the list, leave a like, subscribe. It'd be pretty cool, because I plan to do more videos like this pretty soon. And with that, the video's over.